Please listen carefully. Hello, everybody. Matt already stole my joke about getting between you guys and happy hour. Um, so I hope you will all join us over there, first and foremost. But thank you all for being here, giving me a chance to come up and trade a flannel for a very professional power blazer. This is a rare occurrence in the beer industry. So uh, thank you guys all for that. So with a show of hands, how many of y'all are from Roanoke? How many of y'all are from Southwest Virginia? How many of y'all are from Virginia? And how many of you keep your hands up if you have heard of Deschutes Brewery? Awesome. Perfect. Great. So that's super important because when we're talking about who I am and what I do here, my main job is to build relationships. So Jeff, if you're watching on the live stream, that's my boss, and Angela, um, let's just go ahead and assume I've hit my goals for the year, right? That was a lot of raised hands. Um, so we chose to come to Roanoke and build an East Coast facility here uh, about a year and a half ago. We made that announcement. And we started right away years before we're going to have the brewery by coming here to become a part of the community. And so that is what I'm here to talk about is a little bit more on this other side of things compared to what we're talking about, these tools and strategies to build community, but more this idea of a business that chooses to lead by becoming a part of the communities that they're in first. So that started way back in 1988 when I was starting to form my first full sentences that my parents could understand uh, when we opened in Bend, Oregon a small little town of about 12,000 people back then that our founder, who we are now lucky enough to also call a co-owner, 100% employee and family owned, still to this day, he had traveled to Bend, Oregon and absolutely fallen in love with this little kind of sleepy community that was a little bit economically depressed, had been a former timber town with lots of industry, lots of people that had gone away. And he had a lot of experience in the restaurant business. And back in the 80s, uh, you know, I was not obviously old enough to remember, but I have heard there was a lot of yellow fizzy beer around. And Gary Fish and everyone at our company, and hopefully lots of you, could all agree that good beer brings people together. And back then, you pretty much had to make it yourself. So Gary pulled in a brewer by the name of John Harris, and together they opened the Deschutes Brewery Public House on Bond Street in downtown Bend. And it really was founded on that premise of bringing people together, the community together, and in a community that Gary knew we could make a difference. Because from day one, it wasn't just about making really tasty, delicious beer, but it was about doing something greater, building a community and building partnerships and people. And so we have continued to do that for almost 30 years, right? We'll hit our birthday June 27th of next year. Super excited about that. And we started really right away. Gary started something called the, the Sagebrush, Sagebrush Classic that helps raise funds for children and youth in the Central Oregon area. And we've continued that in a lot of ways over the years, raising money, right? Finding worthy nonprofits and partners that we can help do more than just sell beer. Obviously, we have to sell beer, so we have the dollars to help. So thank you all for coming across the street afterwards and helping us in that mission. Uh, appreciate that. But as you can imagine, there's a lot of ways that you can, as a business, be asked to participate and support. So we have, over that time, come up with four core areas where we are going to lend our support. And the first and foremost is water. Beer is over 90% water, unless you're drinking a light beer, and then I would argue it's 110. Uh, <laughs> But water is super important. Land conservation. We are in this beautiful scenic area of central Oregon. And so conserving that land and trail management so that people can go out and enjoy it, come together in nature, just as we do here in Roanoke, very important to us. And then also youth and hunger, kind of going hand in hand for us. A little weird maybe to think of a beer company supporting youth, but that's what Gary led with back in 1988 with the Sagebrush Classic. And how do we get the funds to do this, right? So there are two ways. I already mentioned one. We sell a lot of beer. So last year, we sold over 374,000 barrels. A bailer, bail, barrel is about two kegs that you might be more familiar with that size, right? So every two kegs that we sell, $1 goes directly back to the communities in which we sell beer, which now covers 29 states and Washington, D.C. here in the U.S. So we have that program. So keep on drinking our beer, right? And we'll keep supporting but we also have a little something called Street Pub, and if any of those raised hands from Roanoke probably remember. 
So we have held this for three years running now. We're actually about to have our very last one of the year this weekend um, down in Sacramento, or sorry, next weekend down in Sacramento, uh, California. But the two that we've held in Roanoke have been real record breakers for us and something that we are so overwhelmed by the support of people coming out to support their own community. So in those two years, you'll see up here, $148,500 directly back into the Roanoke community. And we are hoping that with this last street pub in Sacramento next weekend, we're gonna raise over a million dollars just from the street pub program alone. So between those two things, last year we donated over $800,000 and this also actually doesn't even capture some of the spends that our sales team is doing in their individual communities. Because it's ingrained into every single person that we hire, over 500 people now, the community is what we're about. We make a lot of beer and the beer is important, but people first. So, th so far this year, in that water category, we've restored a billion gallons of water to the Deschutes River that helps make all that beer. We have protected 3.7 million acres of land in the US so far. Supported more than 7,000 youth in both Oregon and Virginia. And this last statistic about hunger, unfortunately we didn't have the numbers to talk about what we've done to fight hunger here in Virginia, but in central Oregon alone, we've helped feed 2,687 families. So we talked about the growth and drinking beer so that we have money to do this with, right? And part of that means expanding to the East Coast. And We've already talked about what do we do and how do we do it, but I wanted to mention the other side, right, of how we're growing and why we're doing it that way. So why was it Roanoke? Sure, there are lots of places you could build a brewery, plenty of places have wonderful people and great water, but why did we come here? And this slide really captures a lot of that. It was the community. It was the people that were here that, yes, there are great people everywhere, but the way that that Deschutes to Roanoke campaign embraced us and said, hey, I know that you're already looking at us, but did you know this about Roanoke? Did you know that about Roanoke? Have you heard about the Greenway? I know you've probably heard about it, but did you know this personal story that I have and how I've loved your beer for years? And that everyone really rallied behind bringing us here because they knew everything that Roanoke can become and they knew that attracting businesses is a part of that. And that's the type of partner that we were looking for. Because remember, when Gary Fish decided to open in Bend, Oregon, it's because he knew the impact we could make. And we wanna be surrounded by people that have that passion. So I would encourage all of you that are in this room today learning about how to help people start small businesses. Include that in your conversation, right? That you are helping them to help the community, but let's keep that cycle going. How can all of these businesses that come together with great strong communities give back in that same way? How can they open that first establishment? Our tasting room just opened downtown. Please come join us down there for a pint. I'll actually be up there after our happy hour. So adding jobs right away, even before we have a production facility that's gonna add about 100. We're making an impact right now today because we want to be a part of that downtown center, that place where everyone can come together over a beer. We're living that principle every day, even before we have our manufacturing facility. How can they work with other businesses in the community? We're not just here to come be some giant big brewery on the block, right? The other reason we came here is there's already great beer here. Really inspired breweries that are already adding to that part of the economy that we've seen all over the United States had a lot of success. There's so much research about how craft breweries and brew pubs are a driver for economic growth in really depressed parts of cities. So it was awesome that we could join what's already happening, help invest in that, and work with them and make more great beer, right? And then of course the other side, that's a little bit more traditional, right? The volunteering, partnering with nonprofits, going out and cleaning up Tinker Creek that will run, it runs right alongside our brewery site, so it's even better but also the way that we look for partnerships. And this is, this is really the last thing that I wanna leave you guys with, is that everyone in this room, it's second nature to think about things long-term. We're talking about growing communities sustainably and successfully, but it's also important to drive that in business. So that when I sat down with the organizers for City Expo, I said, hey, you know, what are we doing now? And what can we do to start? because I'm looking at this long-term. How are we gonna be continuing to build this five, 10, 15 years from now? 
when we're still Deschutes in this community, building our position here and working to grow Roanoke and all of the communities where all of you guys have come from? Because we're partners. It's not about growth for the sake of growth. It's sustainable, it's long-term, and it's something that helps everyone in the community. So again, happy hour. Come over, have that beer, help in that way, but also come together over that beer. Meet all of each other. I find it's easiest over a pint, but if you don't want to do that, hang out in the lobby. Grab that speaker off the stage that you just have this burning question, you got to find them. But always choose that. Choose to come together and ask the question and start something new. Thank you all very much.